Now, a spy working for Canadian intelligence smuggled 15-year-old Shamima Begum and her two friends from Bethnal Green into Syria, a new book claims. Yes, the allegations also say that Britain later conspired with Canadian authorities to cover it up. Shamima Begum is now 23. She remains in a refugee camp in northern Syria. And in an exclusive interview with Good Morning Britain last year, Shamima claimed she'd been groomed. At the time, I had just recently started becoming very religious and I was being told, I was being fed a lot of information on the internet by people in ISIS telling me that I need to, I need to come because I can't be a good Muslim in the UK and that my family will only drag me down with them. If, so, you, yeah. were f you were 15 yeah. when you left with your, your two friends. Are you, are you saying here, based on that last yeah. answer, Shamima, are you saying that you were groomed? I think, yes, I was groomed and taken advantage of and manipulated into coming, yes. And author Richard Kabaj joins us now. His book, The Secret History of the Five Eyes, and the Five Eyes refers, Richard, to an alliance, doesn't it, between Correct. a number of countries, includes Britain, New Zealand, Australia, Canada and the United States? Correct. Is that right? Yep. Just tell us briefly, what, what, is, what is the discovery that you have made here by speaking to your book? You've gone yeah. and spoke to lots of world leaders. Uh, what, what have you discovered here exactly? So, of course, the Shamima Begum story, which has hit the news today, is one of many stories in the book. But I think it's quite an emotive story. The story is essentially a story about a cover-up. So we've known now since 2015, there's been reports in the press about there being a Canadian... Um, a person working for the Canadian services who may have smuggled her in, but no one's really stood that up. And I spent the last couple of years investigating a number of stories, including this one. And I interviewed many people, both some on the record, some off the record. And in fairness to the Canadians, actually a lot of Canadian uh, intelligence officials were very clear about what happened, were very honest and transparent about what happened. And for several months, I appealed to the Canadian Security Intelligence Services to say something about this, having initially agreed to discuss it. Mm. They then just went to ground. Mm. And I think there's a lot of uh, disquiet in Canada at the moment about this being covered up and the impact that this has sort of so, on their image. So he was, a, he was a human trafficker. Correct. And then, and then he at one point so, walks into the Canadian embassy... In Jordan. In Jordan. To apply for uh, political asylum. Right. And I think the Canadians saw that as an opportunity to recruit him. And I think, to give it some context here, intelligence agencies require... Um, they need to recruit people because the only way to get visibility into a criminal network or a terrorist network is to actually be able to infiltrate that network. Mm. And so who better to recruit than someone working within it? So he was carrying on doing this and he was feeding back the information... Correct. ..on who he was moving and, through... And the majority of whom were British, actually. So at the same time that the British were trying to stop young men and women, and in some cases children, trying to get through into Syria, mm. the Canadians were running an agent who was facilitating the entry yeah. of and those And one people. of the key things is that the Met Police, when Shamima and her two friends left, the Met Police yeah. put out this international appeal, didn't yeah, they? Calling they did. for people with information to come forward. Well, they weren't only just calling for people, they called for anyone with any no. information to Canadians come forward. And the Canadians had information, no, the Canadians sat on this, in fact... So they would have known at that point, they would have seen the pictures like we all did... A day after, so, so the, appeal, the, the appeal was done on the 20th of February 2015. On the 21st is apparently when he, this agent, told his... Yeah. Um, uh, ..told his handlers. He wasn't arrested until about a week later, and the Canadians didn't notify the Brits until the following month, when they realised that the story could go public, and they notified Scotland Yard hoping to just not get embroiled now, now this in the investigation. Just, this is a bit more of a self-protection thing, rather than them actually saying it's that totally this has self, happened. It's totally self-serving. This, this totally is the bit of information. People at home might be going, oh, hang on, this sounds made up. But the bit for me in your book, yeah. and this is incredible, is, is that you have spoken to Commander Richard Walton, who was... Who was a head of counter-terrorism. Met the head of counter-terrorism, and he admits that, yes, he was visited by Canadian officials, and, he's, and by no certain terms, they were there to try and make sure that this did not come out. So... Uh, I, that, went, I, went right? to, yeah, I went to Richard Walton, who's actually an incredibly uh, honest person, and I went to him and I said, I've spoken to Canadians about this. I've got this story. I'm aware of it. And he was very restricted about what he could say. The things that he said on the record are on the record, and that's pretty much where 
things out, and that can be read in the uh, book, and that can be seen in some of the stories that have picked up on it. But, yeah, there is absolutely no doubt that the Canadians uh, worked on this. And also, it brings into question, as has been raised by today's papers, about, you know, what role Britain played yeah. in all of this. Because, uh, you know, I have... You know, I, I don't have any evidence that they didn't try to do something about it and weren't stopped as a result of um, the Canadians or someone else interfering. And I think that's why it'd be important to have someone who can get access to those yeah. secret documents. The scary thought is, Richard, is that I, I remember, you know, and quite rightly, yeah. at the time, people were worried, going, you know, what if she's part of a, a, a next attack on Britain, a terrorist attack on Britain? What if she, she kills British soldiers? What if she kills innocent victims? You know, imagine if that had happened. What conversation would we be having now? What responsibility British secret services and sort of, certainly Canadian secret services would have to take? Yeah, I think... Look, I think it, there are so many questions that this raises. And as I was saying earlier, the only way to get to the bottom of this is by having some sort of an inquiry, because, you know, everyone will have an opinion about this. Some people will have an opinion about Shmema Begum not returning, not having her citizenship reinstated. Some people will want to treat her as an adult as opposed to a child. Mm. But the long and short of it is, I think, the only way to get to the bottom of this is to properly have it. Do you think we'll have at. an inquiry? Do you think that... I know the lawyers are calling so. for it. I hope so, because I think the impression that I got from speaking to the Canadian officials, and I spoke to many, is that they themselves, as a result of this, feel that they'll have some sort of an inquiry. Okay. Okay. We will yeah, wait right. to see what happens. Richard, Thank thanks so much. much. Richard, thanks very much. Thank Richard's you. book, The yes. Secret History of the Five Eyes, is out tomorrow. And that was uh, Richard Gabbage's very first television interview on the subject. Thanks for joining us, Richard. And just to say, a British government spokesperson has told us it's our long-standing policy we don't comment on operational intelligence or security matters. The Met Police says it can't comment on operational matters either. And a Canadian security intelligence spokesman said the service couldn't publicly comment or confirm or deny the specific specifics of its investigations, operational interests, methodologies and activities. So that's uh, basically no comment from any of them.